So here we are looking at the femur. We're looking at the proximal end here, posterior point of view. What we can see first of all is the head. So this here is the head of the femur. You can see it's a well-rounded ball. But notice that in the surface of the head of the femur, here's a little fovea. That's the fovea for the ligament of the head of the femur, sometimes called the fovea capitis. So that's it there. Then we have the neck. Remember, there's no anatomical or surgical neck. There's just the neck. And then we have the greater trochanter and the lesser trochanter. Now, the greater trochanter is quite large. Here's a lateral point of view. You can see it's a big structure. Superior end here. Then in between the two trochanters, we have the intertrochanteric crest on the posterior aspect. Now, in the crest, there's a bump here called the quadrate tubicle. If I turn, just rotate the femur that way, you can see that the quadrate tubicle is a little bit more raised, a little bit more of a bump than the rest of the crest. So that's the quadrate tubicle where the quadratus femoris attaches. Just here, towards the top of the greater trochanter, a little gap there, a little space called the uh, trochanteric fossa. So that's the trochanteric fossa there. Now then, if we keep moving around to, to it, now looking at the anterior aspect here, we can see the intertrochanteric line running from the greater trochanter down towards the lesser. But once we get past the lesser trochanter, can you see that that line continues? Now that line that carries on past the trochanter is the spiral line. So that's the spiral line where vastus medialis attaches. Now, from the lesser trochanter down, though, here we have another line. And that line there coming directly from the trochanter, moving inferiorly, is the pectineal line. And, of course, the pectineus attaches there. Now, lateral to that, on a posterior aspect, we've got the gluteal tuberosity. And if we move down to the middle third of the shaft of the femur, all those lines kind of come together to form the linear aspera. So there's the linear aspera, posterior aspect, middle third of femur. And when we get down to the distal end, can you, did you see what happened to the linear aspera? Now it splits into two structures. We've got a lateral supracondylar line and a medial supracondylar line. Now in between them, we have the popliteal surface. On the medial side, we come then to the adductor tubicle, which is that bump just there that the adductor magnus attaches into. And then, distal to that, we have the medial condyle and the lateral condyle. And in between them, we have the intercondylar fossa. Now then, on the anterior surface, we have the patella surface here. Oh, and of course, medially, we have a medial epicondyle, the bit that sticks out the most. And laterally, we have a lateral epicondyle. Again, sticks out 